Welcome everyone. My name is Jen Bonin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Red Rex, which is the digital platform we're using today. So I'm going to give you some quick intros of these experts in our AI space. Our featured speaker today and coming to us all the way from Italy is Diego. He is a principal analyst and vice president at Forrester Research. He's been with Forrester since July of 2005. He is a leading expert on SDLC processes and practices covering topics such as Agile, Agile and Lean transformations, Agile development sourcing strategies and services, Agile testing tools and practices, DevOps, software testing and quality. Diego also covers software delivery metrics, AI and open source governance. Our second speaker today will be Vivek. Vivek is the founder of CyberWorks Robotics. His background in autonomous self-driving technology dates back to the mid-1980s when he wrote the world's first academic thesis paper on the use of new AI principles for navigation in complex indoor environments while at the University of Toronto. He then published some of the earliest academic papers on autonomous and was a keynote speaker at the American Association of Artificial Intelligence National Convention. He has been featured in numerous popular media, including the New York Times, The Guardian, The Globe, The Mail, The Times of India, Singapore Straits, Profit Magazine, as well as national and international television news programs. We also have Steve Sutherland, who is the president and CEO of Crosswing. Steve is a multifaceted systems design engineer with a sharp talent to envision seemingly impossible market inflection points and then to drive the technology breakthroughs, making them reality. Over three decades, he's been an industry leader at places including Adobe Systems, Best Buy, Hewlett Packard, and Microsoft. Have all leveraged Steve's inventions to build large customer followings in strategic new markets. At Crosswing, Steve spearheads the Agile Nav2 modular holonomic robotics platform, which forms the basis of a series of advanced robotics, including those employed by the DRDC SentryNet project, along with other systems, including Crosswing's high efficiency, clean bot, COVID-19, autonomous disinfection robots. Steve is also president and CEO of Trellis Transit Technologies, where together with service robots and e-bikes, he's focused on last mile breakthroughs that will provide permanently resolving gridlock delays, ensuring nonstop personal transit and ultra efficient goods deliveries in even the most congested urban areas. And lastly, we will hear from two test automation and AI experts from QA consultants, Spencer and Tony. Spencer and Tony are based in Toronto and are responsible for leading the teams designing new testing solutions for emerging technologies, including AI for self-driving systems, blockchain, model-based testing applications for the automotive industry. QA Consultants is very pleased to have two of their clients, executives and customers of the XCOG solution here, the test automation accelerator for cognitive systems. So we thank all of our speakers today for being here with us. We look forward to hearing from them and let's have Diego kick us off. Diego recently finished a research paper on his new research, it's time to get really serious about testing your AI. It's hot off the press and can be found at Forrester's website. Thank you, Diego. We're looking forward to hearing from you today. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone around the world. And um, so what am I going to be talking about in my 15 minutes uh, slot? Well, I guess uh, Jennifer already gave you uh, a, a small, a, a brief intro, intro. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> I'm going to share with you the results of, of actually two years of research that I've done for how do we test AI solutions. You actually saw a great example of how you can use AI for testing. That was the Apple Tools presentation. Here the focus is more about how do we actually test AI? How do we test those AI applications that are, that those applications that are built with AI? Uh, so basically, this research was uh, is made available as uh, as uh, Jennifer said. Um, however, if you're not a Forrester client, you won't be able to download them. But if you do send me an email, I will promise to send you a PDF of part one, 
since, uh, since part two is basically what I'm going to be sharing here with you today. All right, so let's start first. Uh, I guess the, the you know, first thing I would like to do is, is to actually explain what I mean by AI-infused application. An AI-infused application is a combination of both traditional software, traditional software that probably some of you or most of you, like I have, you know, have been building for the year, over the years. Uh, a combination of that type of software with other components that are mostly made of AI and machine learning technology, right, that can learn. So the algorithms are actually constructed in a completely different way, right? The algorithms are built to learn uh, uh, to learn about uh, you know issues that you want to solve rather than having a kind of recipe on how to solve them and so the question is in, in other words what AI infused applications are there are applications that uh, can speak can listen can see can sense can automate and can decide right they kind of look more in you know uh, behave a bit more intelligently than the applications that we we've been building so far all right, so what does it mean then to test an AI-infused application? Next slide, please. So, it, I guess, the, you know, one question could be, is it, just some, is it just testing the sum of all parts? Well, no, not really. We, we know it is more than that. Uh, it's, um, it, it is, you know, besides testing the, 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 the traditional software that uh, you can see here, the user interface that the software might have, maybe access to a database or other components that the AI infused application accesses as traditional software. It means also besides that, it's, it's testing the AI components, right? Testing the models themselves, which uh, can be more or less complex, uh, more or less transparent or more or less probabilistic and 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 we also need to test um, you know maybe you, if in the AI uh, infused application you have a chatbot we need to test the semantics of the language we might need to test um, you know the automation that the AI is 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 executing on or we might have to test what the AI is actually looking at or seeing or translating so we and then besides testing these AI components themselves, which might require different testing, we have to test the combination of all this, right? The end, at the end, the end to end uh, uh, experience that the AI will, the AI infused application will, will have as an outcome. And, uh, and besides all that, we also need to test for, for performance, for security, for all those aspects that in IT we are used to test because we know we have to, because, you know, we want to, we want to provide a great experience to, to our clients. Uh, next slide, please. Now, you know, one thing I mentioned is, 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 or you saw written there, is that there is a level of uncertainty that matters for testing. Uh, and uh, it matters because it makes testing more complex. And that's one big difference, right? It is that the models embedded in the apps that might be based of more complex machine learning, things like reinforcement learning, online training in production create more non-determinism and we know how to test the deterministic algorithms but we know less about how to test for non-determinism and and testing becomes much more uh, much more complex and can be uh, very hard next slide please so before i actually go into some of the uh, uh, you know of a possible strategy of how um, of how to test uh, the question of how to test ai's ai infused applications i guess the right you know question is why is it that you you know Diego, you're speaking about this why do we really care about a different type of testing or better test or is there a better testing needed well it's very simple one because we use ai and ai infused applications are involved in more strategic decision making uh, you might be using as a bank uh, AI to kind of recommend uh, investments for uh, for products or, or strategic, you have, might be making some strategic management decisions. It might be used in cyber security, but also besides uh, the, the type of strategic decision making that the AI is involved, AI could also be impacting our lives. Uh, think of uh, you know think of self-driving cars. Uh, we met that was mentioned or autopilots. Uh, you want to make sure that those are tested thoroughly, that we can trust jumping on a self-driving car and move around. But besides the type of applications, the other important aspect of this is as AI becomes better, as we improve AI and the sophistication of AI, 
we are trying to get humans more out of the loop, right? As we, as AI becomes more autonomous, we're not there yet, but that's what we're trying to do over the next few years. And then the question is, well, how, you know, how can I trust an autonomous system if I'm not sure it does the right things, if it doesn't take the right decisions, right? And, and therefore diminishes the risk. So I guess, you know, another question, important question is, are organizations today testing AI well and enough? Uh, my gut feeling is not really, I don't think so. Uh, but I think this is starting to change as the following slide shows you. If you look at the numbers here on the slide, you can see that um, in this survey that uh, the World Quality Report that was done by uh, Cat Gemini is over to 1700 IT leaders, more testing with and for AI are in the plans of IT executives uh, in 2000 and 2021. And, um, and actually, if you do another little clip, you'll see that it's really in that 88%, I would say it's more about testing with AI, right? Things that like AppliTools, you just saw AppliTools doing, using AI to test software better. Uh, and it's a little bit less about the testing of AI, which is what I'm talking today. So this is a nation kind of, I, I think, you know, it's, it's massive, it's the early days. But we'll have to do more of it because 80% and, uh, and Forrester data, which is 73% of organizations are claiming they're doing more and adopting AI in 2021. So the number of applications, AI-infused applications that are being built are growing tremendously. Next slide, please. So I guess the research unveiled, you know, some, some good news, which is, you won't have to, we don't have to reinvent uh, everything, right, for testing AI infused applications. As a matter of fact, it revealed that most of the practices of the testing we know of is going to be applicable in the world of testing AI infused applications. They might be slightly different, but there are similarities like, uh, I don't know, we have unit testing in the software world, which is only done by developers. You don't need a tester to be involved. Well, we've got something similar, which is called model validation in the in the AI world, in the model in the in the AI modeling world, where that's done by the data scientists, but the rest of the type of testing, functional testing, low performance integration, data testing, monitoring, and even testing with uncertainty, that does start requiring the involvement of of uh, of testers. But it also requires, as you will see in a minute, new practices and new approaches for testing and testing of AI infused applications, and so. What is it that really is different between testing AI-infused AI applications and the traditional world? Let's see that in the next slide, at least some of that. Um, and that's kind of where the bad news is because there are some challenges, right? There are some challenging factors that influence the testing of AI, and here are some of them. First of all, data scientists don't really apply the rigor a tester would apply when testing their models. They basically uh, look at the model meeting, the objective function as a mathematical objective to, to, to achieve. And, as, and uh, that they do that as they train and test and train and test. But that's different from, for example, how useful is functionality and how it interacts with the outside world. How does that model interact with the rest of it, with the rest of the system around it? Some models might be even very complex. Think of those using reinforcement learning or when you have a multiple number of, of, of models in an AI in an in an AI infused application system that has to interact and perhaps has data that has to flow from one model to the other, the lineage of the data it becomes very combinatorial and complex to kind of test all those cases and and if there are non-deterministic cases even harder we're learning to test in production in the software world but in the AI world it's just going to be much more pervasive automated to deal with we have we're going to have to do it continuously because models once they are once ai systems have models in production those models start drifting with the inferences as they are hit by new data the data that they were trained with and they were tested with is now kind of old and we need to retrain and retest and bring them back uh, into the development and testing to retest and then redeploy. So testing in production becomes a continuous testing automated process that is needed. And last but not least, when models carry a lot of uncertainties or are very probabilistic, testing tools don't have the capability to deal with tests that have passed at 60% you know, for in the current tools that you're using, tests either pass or fail. They never pass at a certain percent with, with a probabilistic value. So there's technology also that needs to be upgraded to be able to do the testing as we need to do in AI. 
Next slide, please. So what is the way forward? What can you do today? Well, there's a lot of things we can do today, as you will see. So the first thing is, click please, is start with articulating and assessing business risk. Why is this important? Well, because you want to make sure you're not hitting those red zones, right? You, you want to make sure that if your business application has low risk, you want to avoid going through all the type of testing that you just saw that I mentioned, which can be complex and expensive, might require simulation. If you're, if you're testing a self-driving car, that is high risk and you want to make sure there is high testing, right? So you want to be in that green box. But if you're, if, 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 and, and you also want to make sure that that self-driving car is tested enough, right? So that there is not high risk and low testing. And so basically to do that, you have to involve the, 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 the risk management team of your organization when you start off building an application with an AI infused application and understand what is the level of risk? What is the level of business risk this application is going to have so that you can think about and plan the right level effort of testing. Next point. So testing AI takes a village, uh, means that basically, you know, in the software world, it takes a village too, although people think that they can get away by just having developers do testing. That's not really true. But in AI, it does involve a number of roles for the right types of testing, as you can see in this figure, right? You've got automatic software unit testing, functional testing, load speed performance, end-to-end -end integration, production testing, uh, checking the quality of the data for training and testing, model validation, model and AI bias testing, the, you, you see that these roles have to collaborate and the testing subject matter experts. So if people attending this call are mostly testers, you better get prepared on how you can collaborate with these other personas, with these other roles in a team to start, make sure that you're testing your AI in, in, a, in, a, in, you know, in, in, in and covering the high risks, uh, business risks that the application uh, will, will carry. Next slide, please. Sorry, next point. So, um, of course, I went through this already, right? That's the good news. There is established testing practices. You should leverage those. You should leverage the skills you have. You have got testers inside the organization that should you should knock on the door if they're not knocking on your door to try and get involved in the testing of AI, that, in the building of AI that you're doing to make sure that they can bring their competencies into that team and make sure the testing is done well. So you leverage those testing practices, but you also have to focus on the new practices that are coming along or practices that are not necessarily new, but they are, uh, you know, they're, they're becoming much more important and relevant for testing, like model-based testing. As I mentioned, also testing in production, uh, big data test data management. We have test data management as a practice in software, but in AI, it's all big data. Uh, and we can bring techniques uh, over uh, to kind of leverage, you know, we have to create new techniques to actually be able to, uh, to, to test that, uh, that big data complexity that we have with AI. The next point is, Make sure that there is, you know, uh, very strong test reporting and documentation available, like in the compliance world, especially for AI, you think about it, the, the European, um, the European uh, uh, Parliament, just uh, the European Commission, last, uh, in this month, basically released new e uh, EU regulations where if you want to build and deploy AI ML-based applications into Europe, you have to make sure that the data is, is compliant to, um, um, and the models are compliant to the European values and principles. How do you do that? Well, guess what? Testing can help. You can out, you, if you can't automate some of that, it will be really hard. So make sure that you do show the reporting so that you can comply, you can prove the, the compliance to, to those regulations. Uh, choose the right testing approach for the right types of testing of AI. So not everything, even though, you know, the risk might vary, there is a different type of testing that is needed depending on the types of AI that you're using. One thing, if, you know, one type of testing is is needed if you're testing a chatbot. Another type of testing is if you're doing image recognition, which is much harder than doing maybe in using leveraging uh, some uh, probabilistic algorithms that are just doing clustering for for uh, for error, you know, for for issue clustering. Uh, so make sure that you're not overdoing the use of sophisticated A A AI uh, testing approaches like simulation uh, or model-based testing for cases that might be simpler than uh, to, to, to test with. So there's a whole platform uh, issue here. We have to be doing continuous testing and testing has to be part of that machine learning operations that you hear about, DevOps for AI. 
automation has to be embedded because now you need to not only build, integrate and deploy software, but you have to have to build, deploy uh, also the models and it has to be integrated. Last point. And not all of it, will, not all of this will be automatable. So, you know, there is a lot of work in progress to get there, right? This is work in progress. We're starting to do this more and more, but you might have to, you know, live with some manual testing in some, in some of the cases. So for closing uh, the, um, uh, what I just talked about. So, you know, I don't know how this testing strategy will evolve. There are various options that we consider in the research. Some propose AI to test AI in some cases, in some cases that's true. More model-based testing for many of the use cases is, a, is an option. Chatbot testing, tools like Botium for testing, um, for testing chatbots versus ad hoc testing. Uh, there are options of AI tools that come with pre-built testing bots like IPsoft does. Uh, Amelia comes with a TED, uh, which is a, the bot that tests Amelia. The tool itself offers that opportunity. Consulting organizations like the ones you're going to hear today on the webinar, QA consultants and other large uh, system integrators that come with special practices and their own software IP to do the testing. ThoughtWorks that has IP, for example, to kind of start addressing that issue around automated machine learning and, uh, and other, and, and there's a lot moving on. So you have to stay on top of it. You should start now. And um, and so, you know, we are in learning mode, but I think it's very, very you know important that we do test our AI sufficiently and properly. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. This is just a list of research uh, that in case you, you know, you're interested, you could download if you are a Forrester, um, if you are a Forrester client. Uh, otherwise, thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. That was great. We appreciated that research overview of what you've been looking at in terms of this space. Just um, to remind everyone, if they would like a copy of this research, they should email you if they are not a Forrester client. Correct, Diego? Yeah, for part one of the research. For part one. Thanks, Diego. I appreciate it. And now moving on to Vivek. So just as a reminder, Vivek was the founder of Cyberworks Robotics and one of the very first clients using the QA Consultants XCOG solution. So with that, Vivek, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks so much, Jen. Hello, everyone. At Cyberworks, we realized several years ago that level four and level five autonomous navigation in cars and trucks was probably still a decade or two away. So we decided to focus our expertise in self-driving systems to other types of commercial equipment that didn't involve on-road traffic. Today, Cyberworks has developed a universal vehicle agnostic autonomous navigation technology platform for third party equipment. So our technology replaces the driver of any type of equipment that is pushed or steered in commercial buildings and farms, thereby mitigating labor shortages, reducing labor costs and increasing operator efficiencies for customers by redeploying employees who work with wheeled machinery. Next slide. In the past, we've installed our technology on a variety of OEM products to create, for example, starting with the image on the left, the world's first autonomous tractor tug for the industrial greenhouse industry. In greenhouses, these tugs are used to tow multiple industrial carts to move produce to and from the greenhouse. The middle image is the world's first autonomous industrial ride on vacuum for increased hygiene in large carpeted facilities ranging from airports to libraries to hotels, casinos, and even cruise lines, which all have an abundance of carpeted space. And on the right, the world's first autonomous hospital wheelchair to enter clinical trials at one of the world's largest hospitals in collaboration with the head of radiology to ensure the timely arrival of inpatients for their MRIs and CTs, which often lie idle because of wheelchair portering delays. In the case of this particular hospital, careful data analysis determined that they were losing over $10 million per year due to staff and equipment idle time and increasing wait times for critical scans for cancer patients, resulting in increased morbidity, all of which could be mitigated by the use of our autonomous wheelchair technology. Next slide. 
We have a fairly unique business model in that we license our technology to global OEMs of conventional equipment and let them integrate and sell these sorts of products through their existing global sales and support infrastructure. This results in extremely rapid product development cycle times of weeks instead of months or years, which are typically required by competitive technologies. We're able to do this in part because we've been pioneering this sort of technology since the mid 1980s when the field of autonomous navigation first emerged. Next slide. A few other products using our technology include the world's first autonomous floor cleaner to incorporate the first human safe COVID killing certified UV light for high touch surfaces, which we developed with the world's largest manufacturer of floor cleaners. The ability to kill COVID and other pathogens with the same machine that's used for floor cleaning allows for cleaning at increased frequency or even 24 seven to ensure optimal hygiene without increased labor cost. We also developed the world's first ride on tractor tug with a globally leading maker of specialty vehicles. These tugs are used in operations ranging from industrial greenhouses to auto plants to tow components from production areas to warehousing spaces or loading docks. Next slide. We've also applied our technology to Kubota agricultural tractors to automate transport of produce in orchards. Shortages of labor in the agricultural vertical are crippling supply chains and our technology can help to mitigate these shortages and spoilage of fruit. We're also working with a European maker of wheelchairs to automate wheelchair portering in airports and hospitals. The portering process is a flashpoint for transmission of COVID between staff and vulnerable populations. Automation eliminates this flashpoint and allows staff to be redeployed to more meaningful, meaningful tasks. And we're working as well with a major European maker of greenhouse logistics to further automate greenhouse operations. The main point of describing these products is that they all run on our standard autonomous navigation platform, which reduces upfront development and, in uh, <clears throat> and integration time to a few weeks rather than years, as well as dramatically reducing pro production costs. Next slide. As well, this is possible in part due to our extensive global network of partners from academia to industry, including deep partnerships with companies like Intel and AWS. Next slide. The rapid rollout of these products is made possible in part because of our commitment to automated testing and simulation solutions. Our platform includes a full stack of components that makes simulation testing particularly challenging. These components include autonomous navigation software, fail-safe systems, cloud-based fleet management, statistical reporting, data logging, operation systems, and more. We take a vendor agnostic approach to automated testing technology and use multiple simulation platforms to ensure robust testing. Our own in-house platform runs 48 GPUs on which we've logged over 100,000 hours of testing. We got involved with QA consultants, for example, a few years ago when we received a contract with a major airport to build and deliver CyberWorks software to control a autonomous single passenger vehicle to service the mobility requirements for physically impaired travelers at major airports around the world. It's estimated that 54,000 such autonomous single passenger vehicles would be needed to service passenger mobility demands in high income G20 airports. So they had to be reliable. CyberWorks Robotics team joined the QA consultants team in building out their XCOG testing capabilities for software testing of AI in cognitive vehicles. We were delighted to participate with QA in creating the XCOG solution. Next slide. So in closing, I'd like to encourage anybody interested in deploying autonomous systems to reach out and I'd be delighted to provide our input and advice. Um, thank you everyone for listening.
Thank you, Vivek. That was a great example of how some of this is working. Um, some exciting stuff. And just so everyone knows, in case you didn't pick up on it, Vivek is based in Toronto, Canada. And many of you may already know that the Toronto Waterloo area is considered a top global hub for AI innovation right now. It is my pleasure now to next bring to the stage Steve Sutherland, the founder and CEO of Crosswing Robotics. I mentioned it in his bio in the beginning, but Steve is leading a new project called Trellis, which is a micro rail direct autonomous transit system that he will be discussing. Crosswing also, similar to Vivek and Cyberworks Robotics, uses QA consultants and their XCOG testing solution. I will turn this over to you, Steve. We welcome you to our virtual stage today. Great, thanks, thanks, Jennifer. Hey, um, it's it's fun to be with you uh, today. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of people, you know, on the on the video call who have got different robotics projects and AI projects on the go. And one of the things I'm going to show you uh, very quickly today is some of the projects we have and some of the fun challenges that we have in the future. Uh, so if you can uh, just go to the next slide. Here's an example of uh, CleanBot. Uh, air. So this model um, tracks people as they're in groups and then uh, moves itself in close and tries to recirculate the air in very high volume, um, 500 CFM per unit uh, next to them. Uh, of course, this could be used in, in a retirement home. Uh, in here we show it in a classroom uh, while kids have their masks off while they're, while they're having lunch. But, you know, if you think about the challenges from a, a, a software perspective, this is attempting to learn from the environment. What is a dynamic obstacle? Now, you know, we all know we can recognize faces. Um, that's pretty common. But what happens when, when a robot's trying to determine, hey, where should it go? If there's two or three different crowds, how should it prioritize? How can it communicate? And of course, how can you test that? Uh, sorry, next slide. So uh, we have a couple of other robots here that are part of the CleanBot line. That green one in the foreground on the left there, you'll see some little holes depending on the resolution of your screen. Um, it's great fun. That robot can spray um, a, a UV, uh, sorry, a, a, a liquid disinfectant um, at different ob obstacles that it comes across, different things that it thinks people would have, would have touched. Um, and these aren't always static. So in the picture above, you see there's a fire alarm button. That's not normally touched. It should, it should go around that, but the door handle. Um, and what about that cabinet behind it? You know, you can see a fire hose. Um, and these are things that in the ideal world, and we think this is coming quickly, um, people will be able to tell the robot, hey, when you're going through this room, make sure you do the elevator button or make sure that you do the frame of the door because people hold on to that for stability. So we're very, we're very excited by, the, by where we think robotics are going in terms of the communications with humans in their proximity. Um, you know, we were founded in 2006 and, and we, we build robots for OEMs and, and, and of course um, uh, for our own offerings. But uh, through that time, we think the biggest change is gonna be when people are really communicating. We show in the top right-hand corner, a smaller one of our robots, uh, Virtual Me. Um, and that's a, that's a gentleman who's telling the robot, um, hey, you know, I'm not feeling the greatest. Um, you know, and I've got to walk down the corridor. And if they just had a knee done, um, an athlete with a knee, they, they might want to know that the robot's there with them. So robots that follow people. Now the challenge is, is how do you test all these different scenarios? Because if we just test within our own environment, do we really learn what the AI is going to do in new situations? So the challenge, of course, is how do we simulate all these challenges that are really too costly in a physical lab? And, and how can we implement a solution where we can evaluate our code against others' code, so other people's code? What is the standard for this? What is the standard for the ability of robots to, uh, to meet a threshold before they're let loose? So let's jump to the next slide just briefly. Um, here you see the classic um, uh, test scenario. You know, we have these test harnesses because if you take a bishop, our bishop platform, which is up to six kilowatt hours of energy, and you crash it into the wall, it's it's really designed. It can do heavy duty security. It's really designed for um, for protecting itself. And it, if it were to hit a wall, it's going to do some damage. So we have lighter test units. And then, of course, you have the tester um, who's trying to video maybe what the unit did at certain times. 
And, and this is, of course, always the same location. It's very time consuming. It's very costly. So jumping to the, uh, to the next slide, let's talk a little bit more about where we, where we see AI systems uh, going in the future. So Trellis Transit is a completely autonomous um, micro rail based system, which is just above the traffic. And it's not just for delivering people, it's goods, services, and people, waste pickup. Um, and so the cities don't, don't necessarily start looking quite the way we envision them down the road. This is an example of a city where you have a classic LRT uh, and, and trellis, but you don't get a lot of benefits, but you'll see in a moment there's some huge benefits going forward. Uh, uh, sorry, next slide. Just very briefly here, trellis is about two and a half meters wide. Two people can sit facing each other or you can have a... Um, you can have a, 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 uh, um, a wheelchair go in, or as I mentioned, other robots carrying um, goods and services. Um, and bicycles can be hung on, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, there's a version that will reach down and pick up bikes to redistribute bikes in the city. Uh, next slide. So the question really is, um, how, can trellis, how can trellis ultimately be used? If you had a dedicated grid, micro rail grid, and these are all level crossings, by the way. So so when, when trellis turns, it's much like how a car turns. It has to know that there's a right of way. Now, it doesn't stop. The goal is that no trellis pod will ever stop. They'll always be synchronized. It's as if you approached a, an intersection with a car, and as you were going through that intersection, you knew that the, the car that was coming the opposite direction would miss you by a few feet. So this is, this is some, some pretty hectic testing um, in order to ensure that we can pack as many people on the grid. But at that point, you now have an ability to move the goods and services and people uh, all above the congestion with limited, very, very low energy footprint. These, the rails are composites and the pods are composites. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one, of the, one of the very interesting things um, about Trellis, though, is if, if, we, if we look at the number of pods that would be required to be active simultaneously in a city such as uh, Toronto, we estimate about 200,000 for passenger pods, some of them privately owned and some of them publicly owned, and 50,000 cargo pods. So imagine all of these pods navigating a rail, uh, a grid, and never, never stopping. Now, when I say that, of course, if you're getting on and off trellis, it pulls into a siding. We've invented a switch that is motionless, so we can put switches everywhere. You pull into a siding either to, to connect with the building at the second story or for the system to lower you down to the, the ground level. But if you had that volume of, of pods, it's an amazing challenge how to, how to envision even how to test that from an autonomous perspective, because we want it to learn. Like for example, if, if, if people typically order on their way home, they want you know, bread and cheese in one area, and another area prefers um, salami and, and bagels, um, the system might already be preloaded with those items for the right areas of the city. So when you get off your pod, that bread and cheese that you wanted is literally coming in on the next pod and a little robot gets out, or maybe it's gotten out moments beforehand, it has anticipated your need, but at the same time, it has to anticipate the routes for, for everyone. Uh, next slide. So, so the, real, the real vision here, and I want, I'm hoping somebody, it's hard on these calls because I don't get to see faces, but I'm hoping this is starting to click. If we look at today's cities, it's all about concrete and, and tarmac covering the earth, covering nature. And why is that there on the surface? It's there because all of our vehicles are designed to move on the surface. It's not that we want that. So as soon as we adopt a system where we're above the surface, we can now replant trees and, and shrubbery and, and really get nature back into the core of the city. So you remember that earlier slide I showed you where trellis was up above and then LRT down below. Well, really that's the beginning point, but ultimately what we're looking for is a world where it's green. So with QA consultants, we've been um, doing testing of our current robots and, um, uh, and there's, there's just multitudes, uh, but potentially millions of scenarios just with the current robots. You can imagine with Trellis how many different scenarios will have to be tested with all these level crossings. Um, we're really excited by this and we're excited to save the, the planet in terms of the weight of the machinery that's moving with, with individuals. And you see that little graph down there. 
literally if you're if you're riding on an lrt and it's not full you're 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 wasting a, a huge amount of energy i think everybody knows that um and of course if it's a subway it's even worse so the goal here is let's look for a future where ai can can merge with smart systems to bring nature back into cities anyway thanks very much jennifer and and uh, qa i enjoyed i enjoyed it Thank you so much, Steve. I just think it's amazing to see the opportunity with Trellis, as you said, to create sustainable solutions through those cargo pods that preserve our trees, foliage, our climate for the future. Um, we appreciate you being here with us today. We're going to be moving on now to our last um, group of presenters. What I would remind you all just for a time check, we intentionally will be going until quarter past the hour. So I know some of you may have hard stops at the hour, but the intention of this event is to go till quarter after the hour, wherever you are. We are going to be hearing now from um, Tony and Spencer about XCOG from QA Consultants, which will include a video demo on the new test automation accelerator for robots and autonomous vehicles. So again, just reminding everyone if you can hang with us till quarter after the hour, um, we're excited and looking forward to hearing from both Tony and Spencer on XCOG and the Test Automation Accelerator. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jen. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Tony Giorgini, Director of Technology and Test Automation at QA Consultants and Head of Emerging Technologies and uh, Research and Development Division. And today with uh, Spencer Rubin, who manages the Emerging Technology Projects. Uh, we'll be uh, talking to you all about XCOG, one of the solutions developed by, by our team that accelerates testing for autonomous robot vehicles. So uh, before I hand it over to Spencer, let me say a few words that will probably trigger in each of you some key questions to better understand the QA challenges and what XCOG can address. Uh, when we think of autonomous robot vehicles, for example, like autonomous vehicles that transport product within warehouses or autonomous drones that can monitor areas or deliver products or even aqua, uh, like water autonomous vehicles. And, and how would be the proper way to get tested the AI systems that control those autonomous vehicles? Some initial questions like related to the quality come to our mind. For instance, um, how to address the lack of the QA expertise of the robot engineering companies? Because they are focused on developing robots, maybe developing the AI systems that control them, but they are not experts on, on testing on the QA process to validate what they are building or uh, how to decrease the time to market with a proper QA, uh, like to risk impossible damage and properly handle safety with robot vehicles operating in real environments, like ensuring that the most critical operational situations have been tested, or how to properly deal with the high complexity and non-deterministic states due to the autonomy of those systems, including, for example, um, taking decisions all the time to reach the destination, delivering something something somewhere, avoiding obstacles all the time, stopping whenever needed, waiting for dynamic, uh, dynamic objects crossing, uh, keeping certain distance of the objects, moving again, etc., etc. And also, like, how to check all those possible scenarios in a real environment. It's, for sure, it's not possible, right? But if it was really, how long it would take and what cost? And, and considering some UAT or even a sanity testing, how to decide which scenarios should be tested in a real environment? And then another challenge comes up, which is, how to set up all environmental conditions to perform any tests. So I, I will stop here. I think that was enough to at least trigger the curiosity to know more uh, of how QA consultants could address 
those challenges with XCOG. So, uh, Spencer, uh, it's with, with you now. Thanks, Tony. Let's talk about our solution. The meta model, which you see in the diagram here, translates to different aspects and variables that can be part of a test scenario for the autonomous robot. When you think about what an autonomous robot test case would look like, we think about the robot's objectives. For instance, an autonomous robot that transports a single passenger in an airport or hospital has the objective of taking people from a start point to an end point. But many situations can happen. We represent these situations with what we call test injectors. We can inject static or dynamic obstacles, as well as weather and environmental conditions, just to name a few. The autonomous robot must take decisions instantly to first guarantee what has been transported is safe and second, reach its destination. Our solution not only proposes a way to represent this idea into a meta model, as well as it generates everything automatically through model-based testing. The solution provides high scalability, leveraging virtual and simulated environments. It's much safer, cheaper, and much more robust in physical testing. Our engagements are broken down into five main phases. The first thing is needed is the autonomous robot vehicle code or executable. We also need to understand what the physical components that interact directly with the external world, such as LiDAR, radar, camera, microphone, and any other sensors it may use. We also require the specific rules and requirements that the vehicle uses. This ensures we understand the scope and the type of robot, the environment in which it operates, and if it will be operating around people or not. Once we collect and digest the initial information, we update our meta model and then the test cases are generated automatically. Our tool will scan the meta model and customized rules will start generating hundreds of thousands of combinations of tests, which are all saved to a database. After the abstraction and generation of all test cases, they are automatically prioritized based on the international standards such as ISO 26262. The prioritization is focused on scenarios that might represent higher risk from a safety perspective but this is configurable and depending on what represents more risk to the customer and their business needs. Once the tests are uh, generated and prioritized, we move to our execution phase. Once again, everything is done automatically from creation of tests, prioritization of tests, and finally the execution of tests. During execution, the XCAR platform sets up the environment and calls in the test injectors as explained earlier. All injectors are introduced and then reset after each test completes. The test platform keeps monitoring the execution of tests, it checks the decisions of the robot, and at the end of execution it records the tests either passed or failed. As an example, if the robot was able to avoid any obstacles and keep whatever is carrying safe and reach out to its destination, then it passes. However, if it gets stuck or lost or collides with any object or couldn't take an expected action in a certain condition, then the test case would fail. When all test cases are executed, we have access to the report that lists out all tests that were executed, the results of each one, and the conditions and reason why it passed or failed. We include recommendations to the vehicle manufacturer in terms of sensor positioning and any inputs that can make the robot behave correctly given any uh, specific cir circumstance. After several iterations of this process are identified, defects are fixed, we can also assist in the manufacturer form directed in specific UAT testing using the actual robot. This ensures, most importantly, the scenarios are really covered and the confidence that it doesn't represent any risk. Now let's look at a demo of our solution to, uh, for AI systems. Our first example shows called in test injectors, and in this case, a static object, which results in a collision. As you can see, the meta model registers the failed test case, and then we'll call in the next prioritized test case. Next, you will see a test case that shows the robot path planning software has failed. The robot is path planning outside the physical space that it resides in. As a matter of fact, the path planning software has mapped a path into unexplored space outside the walls of the map itself. This ultimately records a failed test case as the robot does not reach its goal point. In this third clip, you will see an example of the robot getting stuck against the wall within the map. The robot attempts to recover, but ultimately records a failure as the robot cannot recover. This can happen due to incorrect number of sensors or sometimes their positioning. As mentioned earlier, we don't only test ground vehicles. We can also apply our solution to all autonomous vehicles. Here's an example of a drone vehicle successfully reaching its called goal point represented by these blue lines.
Here you'll see a drone test case, which the drone collides with a static object. In this case, the spawn static pillar. It records the collision and then continues testing. Here is another example of the same collision type, but here we are showing our meta model and how it's recording these events. In this video, you will see a set of successful test cases. You will see the path planning goals achieved and goal points change. You will notice both static and dynamics obstacles spawned and the expected decision making by the robot under test. Here is an example of where the vehicle collides with a person. Obviously, you would want to run this test in a simulated test environment. You would also like to rerun this as many times as possible to ensure this cannot possibly happen in the real world. Here is a quick example of the robot stalling and recording a failure. You will see here an example of sensor scrambling. Notice the red dots projected? That is our model calling an IMU sensor disturbance. The robot pauses but recovers, resulting in a pass. Now here is an example of EMU interference. This completely disorients the robot causing a failure recording. The robot has no idea where it is on the map. Here we show a close-up of dynamic object test injectors. As you will notice, we can generate different sizes and speeds. This clip shows an example of using outdoor terrain and fog density test injectors. As mentioned before, our solution is not only for robotics, but any vehicle that requires AI decision making. There are many benefits to our XCOG solution. By leveraging simulation, you are testing without highly paid employees spending many hours conducting physical testing. Also, by leveraging this solution, you're able to test very thoroughly. But most importantly, you can test very quickly. Testing is automatic. It's really set up and go. Testing can occur 24 hours a day. Because you're testing in a simulated environment, you have zero risk to injure or harm during testing and post-deployment. And because of hundreds of thousands of test cases conducted, you can be confident you are ready to go to market. As we can execute so many tests so quickly, we're able to work with the development engineers to put a focused approach to acceptance testing. We leverage simulation results to fine-tune sensor positioning, path planning, and other tests product prior to product release. Robot buyers want to know that their investment is well-tested, safe, and will perform under any expected circumstance. Our metal model approach calls in thousands of test scenarios, including weather and emergency situations, which are not only improbable, but impossible to cover manually. Back to you, Jen. Thank you. That was great. Well, that rounded out all of our speakers for today. We hope that all of you who attended today enjoyed this great panel of experts um, that we saw here today. We hope you gained some new insights and ideas around the importance of quality and testing these types of AI platforms. Thanks again to Diego from Forrester for being here with us and sharing the first piece of the research that's been completed. We also thank the sponsor Dan and Apple Tools for being here with us and sharing information. We hope you enjoyed visiting this Red Rex platform and we hope that you continue collaborating with us.